Welcome to Self-Care Tips. I am Irene Joroge. Leaving the house in the morning in good time can be a daunting task, and yet it is something you will want to master if you're on the high road to success. One of the things you need to do is to be prepared. Prepare yourself the night before. Have your phone in one place, have your keys where they should always be, and all the other things that you require, such as documents, notebooks, your wallet, all these things, so that once you're leaving the house, you don't have to think about it. Get up early, have your alarm on, go and prepare yourself, take one last look at yourself, take one last check list to make sure that you're okay, and once everything is in place, you're ready to leave the house in good time. That way, you'll not be late and you'll not be under any pressure. This has been a Self-Care Tips. Office of the Registrar of Political Parties in partnership with eCitizen brings you a self-service platform for management of political parties membership. At the click of a button, you can now check the political party you are registered in as a member, resign from a political party, or join a political party of choice. Simply log into your eCitizen account, select your preferred service, fill in the details, then submit. You will receive a system acknowledgement of your request and an e-citizen system notification will be issued once the processing is complete. ORPP is committed to serve you to promote political rights in a democratic multi-party system. For more information, visit www.orpp.or.ke or engage us using our handles at ORPP Kenya across social media platforms. Your party, your choice. My name is Muhammad Ahmed Muhammad, the CEO of Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation, popularly known as KDIC. The corporation recently increased the protected sum from the previous 100,000 shillings to 500,000 shillings per account. This is the highest in Sub-Saharan Africa. In effect, the corporation now covers 99% of the depositors in the unlikely event of a closure of a bank. So KDIC encourages the depositors to continue doing business with our banks that are strong and resilient. Be sure, check out for a KDIC sticker in your banking hall. KDIC, protecting your deposits. Good evening, I am Fayaz Qureshi with the Legends Edition on KBC Channel 1. Stay tuned for our Living Legends segment with Surfin Aceng Oma. Our guest tonight is Honorable Zipporah Kitoni, former chairperson of the Maindaleo Yawanawake organization. And our sign language interpreter for tonight's edition is Anne Wangeshi. The highlights for tonight's bulletin.
Hurting the voters, ODM leader Raila Odinga and two-day tour of Mary as Deputy President William Ruto pitches tent in Kuala County. Winds of Change, we tell you how the Hunger and Safety Net program is transforming lives in Turkana. And in sports, bad day out. Kenyan national rugby team eliminated from the Dubai Sevens. Welcome back. A section of central Kenya leaders and professionals want ODM leader Raila Odinga to prioritize implementation of the one man, one vote, one shilling resource sharing formula if elected president in 2022. The group drawn from six counties in central Kenya resolved to rally their people behind Raila Odinga's presidency. They were speaking in day two of the ODM leaders popularization tour of the Azimio La Umoja initiative in Nyeri County. Day two of ODM leader Raila Odinga's visit in Nyeri started at the historic Ruringu Stadium where political and economic stakeholders drawn from six counties in central Kenya adopted a resolution. I hereby read the resolutions by central Kenya leaders and professionals. We, the leaders drawn from the counties of central Kenya, have met today on this day, 27th day of November 2021 in Nyeri and agreed to rally all our people towards a political direction that is sure to secure their future and that of the Kenyan nation as a whole. The leaders pledged to support Raila, saying he is committed to addressing the interests of the region. MPs and governors allied to the ODM leader described Raila as a safe pair of hands, urging voters in the region to back his quest for presidency. And to be safe to do your business, you will be safe with Raila Amolo Odinga. Hii ni mkutano ambaye itakuja kutoa mwelekeo ambaye nchi yetu itachukua kwenda mbele si namna hiyo They said the ODM party has steadfastly supported President Uhuru's development agenda since the handshake taking issues with UDA allies that they claimed are undermining political and economic leaders from the central Kenya You know when it is necessary to compete and when it is necessary to put your personal interest for the good of the country. And for that reason, as the region looks into the future, Siku moja ninunua masanduku 38. Thathin na nani masanduku ya watu ambao walikuwa kwa masanduku wengine wanjaluo, wengine waluya, wakikuwa of course walikuwa wengi kwa sababu ya mtu ambaye alikuwa haamini ya kwamba hawezi kuheshimu maisha ya watu. Mnaweza kupatia mtu kama huyo serikali wananchi wetu? Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya said the mountain will vote wisely. Kuna wengine wamelelewa kwa serikali ya Kimla ambayo wamepata ma, eh, benefits kutokana kwa hiyo serikali. Kwa hivyo tukiwatazama vyema tunajua wakiingia huko hao hata chunga katiba ya Kenya na haki za wa Kenya. Kwa hivyo yule tunaweza kuamini ya kwamba atachunga haki za wa Kenya wote ambaye aonyesha ameonyesha kwa vitendo na personal sacrifice ni mheshimiwa Raila Amolo Ndinga The ODM leader committed to address the prayers of the Central Kenya leaders Tutaanza chuku chini kila mtoto ambaye amezaliwa kwa taifa letu hata kama wazazi hawana pesa atapata fursa sawa kuanzia nursery primary secondary tertiary mpaka chuo kikuu Later, the ODM leader addressed roadside rallies at Odaya, Mukuruweni, and Karatina towns where he popularized his Azimio La Umoja initiative. For the Legends Edition, I'm Zainab Said. Deputy President William Ruto has lauded the church for its contribution to the governance and stability of the country. The Deputy President was speaking in Kinango Town, Kuala County, during the dedication and launch of the Duruma Bible. He said religion plays a key role in shaping the morals of society that are key to development. 
Deputy President William Ruto on Saturday took the bottom-up message to Kwale County where he renewed the push for the formation of political parties with national appeal. The DP has spent the last few months marketing the United Democratic Alliance as a party of choice, one that understands the needs of all Kenyans irrespective of their ethnic persuasion. Siasa ya kona hii na kona hili inatugawanya. Ndiyo sababu tumejenga chama ya kitaifa kuunganisha wa Kenya wote kutengeneza umoja ndiyo tuwe na uwezo wa kupanga vile wa Kenya wote wanaweza kufaidika sio viongozi wachache kupata vyeo lakini sote tuungane kama wa Kenya the calls by the dp comes amid a push by a section of leaders from the coastal region to establish a political party which will advance the interests of the region kazi hizi zinaendelezwa na wale wenye mfano wale ambao wamesimama na wananchi wakati wowote tuko hapa tumejipanga pamoja na gavana mvuria na kina mwashetani na kina feswal tukasema hii kwale itakuwa ya UDA tukiongezwa na nani na naibu wa rais William Samoe Ruto Mungu ashasema tafuta utafanya nini utapata kwa hiyo mheshimiwa naibu wa rais unatafuta na kwa mapenzi ya Mungu utapata Ruto who has placed religion at the heart of his campaigns loaded the charge for his contribution to the development governance and prosperity of the country For Legends Edition from Mombasa County, I'm Michael Mondiga. The One Kenya Alliance has, pri has to prioritize national unity and economic growth if elected into government come 2022. Speaking in Transoya County, Oka principals said they have listened to Kenyans on what is needed to stimulate the economy and stem endemic corruption and bad governance. Kenya, Kenya. Kenya. The One Kenya Alliance has sustained its campaign with a tour of Transoya County as it seeks to indelibly ink its mark on the 2022 political equation. For Oka, the time has come for Kenyans to choose the safest pair of hands. <laughs> Musali Mudavadi and his colleagues are strongly convinced that their political message resonates with the people and that Oka is what Kenya needs. Serikali yetu ya Oka ni ya kuunganisha wa Kenya. Hatuwezi kupagua mtu yoyote na tunaitwa One Kenya Alliance. Hii lazima yokolewe na ofisadi ambao na IBN pesa zenu na kuja kuwaonga na hizo pesa alafu wachague nje itaenda mbaya and as the principal pitch camp in Transoya National Assembly speaker Justin Muturi urged Kenyans to shun division and embrace progressive politics tusiweke ile maoni tofauti iwe ndio italeta furuhu katika nchi yetu ya Kenya tuhakikishe kuna amani Muturi spoke even as Garissa Township MP Aidan Dwale reiterated that he will defend his seat in next year's election, brushing off negotiated democracy being advanced by clan elders in the region. Nimechaguliwa sababu ya maendeleo. Tunataka tukae hapo chini. Tena kutafuta endorsement ya sijui wapi watafute. Lakini watafute wachaguane tukutane kiwanja. Duale said Garissa Township is a cosmopolitan constituency and the ultimate decision on who will be elected lies with the people, not clan elders. For Legends Edition, I'm Ben Troyenjue. Kenya has so far vaccinated over 6.91 million people against COVID-19. The Ministry of Health says 4.26 million have been partially immunized, while over 2.64 million have received both doses. 36 people have tested positive from a sample size of 3,495 screened in the last 24 hours. The positivity rate is now at 1%. Total confirmed positive cases are now 254,000. 
2,940 and cumulative tests so far conducted are 2.8 million. Fatalities remain at 5,333 as no death has been reported in the last 24 hours. Globally, statistics from the John Hopkins University show more than 260.8 million people have been infected while over 5.1 million have died. The Hunger and Safety Net program initiated to support victims of drought through cash transfers has, as opposed to relief food is seemingly changing the narrative in Masabit County. Rosemary Gumato from Merilla Town, a beneficiary, tells a story of success occasioned by small savings that has seen her, among other women, reap millions from unanticipated investments. <laughs> At Merile Town in Marsabit County, we meet Rosemary Gumato, who is running a few personal errands, among them mobile banking transactions. <laughs> Rosemary is a beneficiary of the Hunger and Safety Net Cash Transfer Program that was launched in 2013, getting 5,400 shillings monthly from the government. Bada kupata yo pesa, 2016, tume mama. The mother of six has shifted from the traditional manyatas to a four-bedroom concrete house that she built through small savings after undergoing capacity building. 2,500. Nairobi. Her change of fortunes started with 500 shillings saved weekly via table banking with 18 other women to home banking and loans that saw her upgrade a small canteen she co-owned with her husband to a wholesale shop. <laughs> Merile Town is at the border of Marsabit and Samburu counties, an area that faces perennial drought. Rosemary is among many residents who embraced the cash transfers. Kusema kweli walikuwa napeana hiyo chakula wakati ajilali, lakini sisi wote hatuwezi pata. Lakini hii pesa ya computer, at least imesaidia juu. Kama mimi ndio niko nayo, wa mama kumi watakula. The Hunger and Safety Net Program initiated by the National Drought Management Authority in 2013 was first piloted in Marsabit, Turkana, Mandera and Wajia, and now covers eight counties. HSNP is actually... Uh, targeting the poor uh, households and the reason we are targeting them we don't want them to liquidate their assets currently they own we want to preserve those assets and multiply so that finally they exit the program and say okay they are now sustainable for rosemary and others like her who are enjoying better economic fortunes the tokens are no more and so is the threat of hunger Come Chemenzam for the Legends Edition. Police in Narrow County have raised a red flag over increased cases of drug abuse among students in the area. Narrow County Criminal Investigating Officer Mwendwa Ateba warns that students arrested and prosecuted for engaging in drug trafficking risk missing out on government jobs because of their criminal records. Twelve suspects are in custody after being found in possession of bang with a street value of half a million shillings. <laughs> Police in Narok town have in their custody 12 suspects believed to be involved in the illegal narcotics business after they were found in possession of bang. <laughs> Narok County Criminal Investigation Officer Mwendwa Ataiba and Narok County Police Commander Kizito Mutoro expressed concern the illegal trade has penetrated schools in the region and could be one of the reasons for rising cases of indiscipline, arson and poor performance in national examinations. Nataka ni wa nitoe tahadhari kwa wale ambao wanahusika na mambo ya kuhusa bangi kwa sababu hiyo ni kuvunja sheria. Anisema kwamba tutaendelea na hii kazi ya 
kushika wale ambaye wanaelea na mambo ya kuuza bangi na madawa singine ambazo miandarati ambazo ni mbaya wanafunzi ya mashule wanachoma mashule kwa sababu wanafuta hii bangi watoto waende shule kwa sababu wanavuta hii bangi university masai mara university sasa hii eh hey. mm. watu wameharibika sana pale wanafunzi kwa sababu wanavuta bangi sana kutoka kwa hii suppliers na hivi karibuni tunataka kufanya red huko sababu tunasikia kwamba kuna fanya kazi hata ma lecturers wafanya kazi wa university wenye wanafanya kama workers wana supply bangi mingi sana katika university niko na hii intelligence Meanwhile, Lamu Governor Fahim Twaha has loaded security agencies for their efforts in bringing peace and stability in the county. Twaha, who spoke at a graduation ceremony at Mpeketoni Vocational Training College, also held the national government for initiating flagship projects in Lamu, which will help address economic challenges. <laughs> ile wasiwasi ambao watu walikuwa wanaishi nayo imetuondokea and we are very comfortable vile mnafanya patrols na vile serikali imecommit resources hapa manpower equipment intelligence tuko sawa at the same time the governor read the riot act to county officers who are not performing their duties as expected <laughs> The Association of uh, Women Accountants is calling on the government to support working mothers by making the office environment conducive, especially to those lactating. Association Chairperson Isabel Juma says unlike their counterparts in the private sector, most government offices lack lactation rooms, thus inconveniencing many breastfeeding mothers. At the Association of Women Accounts annual gala dinner, members met physically to reconnect and network even as they take stock of achievements and challenges of the past year. <laughs> the association's chairperson Isabella Juma noted corruption and nepotism are among challenges faced by women in the profession. The profession actually requires a lot of um, time being put in by employees. So sometimes you find that uh, you may miss um, some opportunities at the workplace, probably growth opportunities, because you have quite a bit happening at the home front. Sentiments echoed by Annette Kimite, Managing Director, East Africa Senaka Security Company, who was the chief guest. The association has recruited 1,600 members since its inception in 1996. We are still in the mentality that training is a cost. I come from an HR background where I believe training is an investment. But uh, very soon it will be mandatory for all security of, uh, companies to ensure that before they hire that officer, that officer is trained. Members are now calling on stakeholders in the sector to facilitate an equal playing ground for women as the industry is still male dominated. The private sector is sensitive to the nursing mothers. Uh, such that there's a place you have infants you can uh, like have some they, they have some caregivers there who can like check on your child as you do your work but uh, in most government institutions we don't have that but I believe we are going towards that for the legends edition I'm Zain Abside Toby Lambila is all set with the latest in sports he'll be back he'll, be, he'll join us straight away after the break stay with, stay with us Ili kupata sikiza tini hii ya usini rekord Wajiza star 811 star 396 hash Unakata pia kapaya wa kenya manakuanga nako ya kweka mtu kwa zapika Lafu manarekordi zauti yake ya pila ruza Nikipata zauti yangu ina trend huko inje na kuna pesa napata muta Tua mini mulu yako na roya na sina roya pinadamu Usini rekord Ili kupata sikiza tini hii usini rekord Wajiza star 811 star 396 hash Do you have a news story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email newsroom at kbc.co.ke Call 0723-892-654 or 0734-780-124 The 
Office of the Registrar of Political Parties is a model regulator of political parties mandated to register political parties, regulate political parties, and administer the political parties fund. It's just that we've been so pacified, and, mm -hmm. and I say this unfortunately, even when we need to speak about things, mm -hmm. we don't. Yeah. Because we've been routined to keep quiet, you know, and when the boss says, stand, yes. you stand. When yes. they say, sit, you sit. Yes. These young guys are not yeah. from that school of thought. Yeah. ORPP is committed to serve you to promote political rights in a democratic multi-party system. Well, it's good evening and uh, once again a big welcome to this uh, Saturday's edition of the, uh, of the Sports Roundup on the Legends edition this Saturday evening. It's a pleasure to have you back again with another band edition of the sports. The Kenya National Rugby Sevens team finished eighth in the just concluded Dubai leg of the HSBC Sevens World Series after losing the seventh place playoff by, by 29-7 to Ireland. Kenya had lost the cup quarters 19-5 to Fiji and then fell 33-5 to Great Britain in the fifth place playoff before losing to Ireland. Back with the details. The Kenya National Rugby Sevens team began day two of the Dubai Sevens on a losing note after going down 19-5 to Jans Fiji in the Cup quarterfinals. Kenya scored the only try of the match through Haman Huma before conceding three tries to Fiji. Outside at the line out, it was caught ball, so they have to remain the 10. Quick tap, and they double down on that mistake, double penalty, ball is loose. <laughs> and Kenya get the first point, Humwa. Wow, frantic stuff. Helman Humwa, two meters out, just finally decided to dot it down. The losing streak continued in their fifth place semi final as they were thrashed 33 to 5 by Great Britain, again scoring only one try through Alvin Otieno. And again, it was only one try in the seventh place playoff. And again, it was only one try in their seventh place playoff match against Ireland. Haman Hume was scoring the only try in the 29 to 7 loss to Ireland. The next leg will be played also in Dubai next weekend and then head to Spain for two more legs in Malaga and Sevilla in late January. Sports Cabinet Secretary Amina Mohamed says the government will be put in place measures to recognize and reward former sports personalities in the country. Amina was speaking during the 13th edition of the African Masters Athletics Championships, which concluded today at the Nyayo National Stadium. We'll with the details. Amina hailed the sports persons who took part in the competition, terming them as loyal and committed to the sport. She said the government will formulate ways of recognizing and rewarding former sports personalities, urging them to be good role models to the building athletes. I just want to salute all the sportsmen and women from across the continent, but also outside the continent, who have participated in the Masters Championship. You know, honestly, it's always for me, it's very, very uh, satisfying uh, to watch those of us who are in our golden years do so well on the, on the field. I think it's encouraging, it's inspiring, and it's something that I think we should uh, uh, engage in uh, much, much more. I have been here for a long time, and I have been here for a long time. I have been here for a gold medal, because I have been here for 100 meters, and I have been here for a long time. Na 200 meters, then I number one. The event, which started on Wednesday this week, attracted over 100 athletes from various countries. Daniel Mwendwa for Legends Edition Sports. Paul Orlando Jr. and Angel Kagambi are the champions of the Oshol Academy Nairobi Open Junior Chess Championships after topping the charts in their respective under-17 categories. The two won the overall titles after six rounds of the championship, which attracted more than 400 players and held at the Oshol Academy here in Nairobi. Backs with the details.
Paul Orlando Jr. and Angel Kagambi were the best players in the one-day Osho Academy Nairobi Open Junior Chess Championship held at Osho Academy today. Orlando Jr. won five and drew one of the six matches he played to top the table with 5.5 points. He defeated Duke Dakshesh and Shadrach Gitonga who won silver and bronze in the category. Angel Kagambi was too smart on the board as she won gold ahead of Devashri Shah and Dutlak Shita who secured the silver and bronze medals in the under-17 years category. The game has grown in standard. We have many coaches, we have a lot of resources and support from even outside. Yeah, so we're looking forward to resuming chess slowly but surely and in the best organized way. We are going to face a few challenges here adjusting to the new normal but I'm sure with everything we shall fit in and it shall, it shall all be well. Kumar Manri was the best boy in the under 15 years category having beaten Sandeep Madaravapu to second position while Brianna Katono was the best girl in the under 15 years category. We always had chess competitions within the school and within the uh, international school level but uh, we thought that it is a good opportunity for all the county students also to compete with the students of Nairobi and come up with a gaming spirit and they can build up on their uh, skills of participation and skills of game. Timothy Anuzu and Prisha Sinha were the best players in the under 13 years category. Nipul Shah and Teddy Mutugi were the best players in the under 11 years category. Cruz Miner and Stacey Chebet were the gold medalists in the under 9 years categories. While Nathaniel Manyeki and Charlie Wambui won gold in the under 7 years categories. In the past two years, due to this COVID-19 uh, uh, kind of pandemic in the world, a lot of students were missing their sports activities. So this is our endeavor to inculcate spirits of social interaction uh, along with uh, COVID uh, protocols. And uh, this is, I think, right venture for kids to inculcate spirits of, uh, I know, togetherness, uh, sports activities and uh, looking forward to. The one-day tournament attracted a total of 403 players and was among the first over-the-board chess tournaments being held after the COVID-19 pandemic. The Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology emerged the overall winners of the baseball competition which came to a close today at the Jaquat grounds. The event which attracted over 10 teams saw Jaquat walk away with a gold medal and 25,000 Kenya shillings. Mwendwa with the details. It was a tight competition where teams from different parts came out to take part in the baseball competition at the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Alice in Africa El Bagon team and Jaquat proved superior and clashed in the final with Jaquat winning 7-3. Beat that pressure if you have to win and that's why you saw we were psyching ourselves up and we made sure that we caught those people and made sure that our could regain their, their psyche because if it, they had regained their psyche and we didn't want that. The winners Jaquat baseball team walked away with gold medals and 25,000 shillings while runners up Alice in Africa a bargain pocketed 15,000 shillings. The game is not very new in Kenya because it came here in the 1990s or thereabout but uh, now I think there's a new wave uh, which is bringing growth to the game and uh, I think the new management and the kind of approach we are taking currently is uh, uh, more effective than uh, there before. To introduce what we call Baseball 5, Baseball 5 is a game that is played without equipment. All you need to play Baseball 5 is just a ball and then the concept is actually that of baseball. Baseball Federation of Kenya President Titus Motwidi says his federation will work closely with the sports ministry to spread the game of baseball to all corners of the country. Our vision is to ensure that every county has got a chance to uh, show the talent that they have for baseball. And today in this tournament, Jack Robinson, we have seen the game whereby boys have gone all the way through using blood and sweat to ensure that they keep the sport alive. Daniel Mwendwa for Legends Edition Sports. 
On the international scene is a story that must put a smile on very many soccer fans that have not been having it very good very recently. Arsenal scored two goals in the second half to record their seventh win of the season and stay six points adrift of leaders Chelsea. Chelsea. Tavares and Tom Yasu contributed the goals scored by Saka and Martinelli against Newcastle United at Emirates to an Arsenal the much deserved win. One week after being thrashed 4-0 by Liverpool, who also defeated Southampton by the same margin today. Crystal Palace lost one two to Aston Villa, while Norwich and Wolves played to a goalless draw. A report by Pax. And that EPL story brings a wrap-up to the sports edition on this Legends edition this Saturday evening. We hope that you join us again next Saturday for another edition of the Sports Roundup. And remember that, you know, today we had an expanded edition and we welcomed on the show in the earlier, uh, earlier bulletin the Twins. So looks like the Legends edition is expanding. Fires. It's been uh, quite a day. Yes, very, very interesting. Uh, you've got the twins on both. The Legends uh, edition expanding uh, and getting more and more uh, interesting uh, day by day. And Topi, uh, a real shocker uh, for the Kenyan uh, rugby team, Dubai Sevens. Yeah, interestingly, uh, you know, I think it's kind of like uh, what happens is a question of like, they always have these ups and downs, you know, like they won the last uh, championship quite good. And now again, it's like, but I think maybe it's like, uh, like somebody uh, mentioned it could be maybe like some fatigue because recently they had quite a, a grueling team in the, uh, in the seventh year. I think their schedules have to be planned really well. Well, I think it's great, and I know that you are now hand you over to Fires, of course, who uh, will finish the roundup. And today we've got a great interview. He'll tell us all about it. Fires, it's over to you. And uh, for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for the rest of the crew out there, it's a great weekend. Have fun. Just take care. And remember, it's another great week coming up. And we see you next Saturday for another Bambi edition of the sports on the Legends Edition. Thank you very much, Topi Liambila. And now we'll take a short break. In the meantime, stay tuned for our Living Legends segment with Serfine Acheng Omar. Our guest tonight is Honorable Zipporah Kitoni, former chairperson of the Maendeleo Yawanawake organization. Stay with us. so much for keeping it kbc channel one yes we are just about to have an important conversation that will take you down memory lane in this particular country as we trace the journey of a powerful woman who has played an active role in the leadership of this particular country she is a former nominated senator and member of parliament and also chaired one of the biggest women movements in the country during its pioneer days i'm talking about maendele Yawanawake. She is a philanthropist and also somebody who has played a pivotal role in the world of entrepreneurship. We are going to be sinking into her world to understand what she is doing now, about four years since she retired from active politics. I'm talking about none other than Mweshimi Wazipora Kitoni. Thank you so much for having us. And you do not look like your age you know <laughs> i just discovered you're 78 <laughs> oh no i'm not even 78 now i think i've passed that past 78 yes so i'm <laughs> waiting for a month to go to be 79 <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm hoping that court will give me the grace to see 79 mm-hmm. in a month's time. All right. So I want to say thank you very much, Savine, for visiting me. Thank you for discovering. I came to hide here for a very good purpose because I think I deserve to say I have served this country with a lot of passion and with a lot of satisfaction and it took uh, me a while to decide on retirement. So I took my retirement in 2017 and uh, I came home and I've been coming home even when I was in active public life because I like up country. If you were to write a book about yourself, how would you title it? Well, my book is hopefully coming out very soon. And um, I have mentioned quite a number of things that I've achieved. I think I would be right if I say I am a first in almost everything because I'm a first to venture. First and foremost, I never went to university class, Mm. but I have made myself to be where I am, reading through extra curriculums before, because when I grew up, basically from my home, there were no schools in Rift Valley for girls to further up their education. We only had one girls' school, that is the Kapsabit girls. And so me coming from Baringo, which was close district, was a lot of disadvantage. We were in a close district, and um, if you don't get number one to number four, you can count yourself out. You just either remain to be a trained teacher or go for nursing. Those are the options at that time. And then after that, uh, I didn't go to Kapsabit for 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 father i went to kapsabit standard one to eight Mm -hmm. and that was it and then i had to do teacher training then i had to do i i taught first as a trained teacher and then i went for training and that is my life so i've whatever i've gotten as my phd which you will see in the house when you're taking pictures later on it's my hard work, hard work. through my own yeah. initiative life, to learn. So life. my book mm-hmm. will have a lot of stories right from my childhood to what I am. We're very, very good Christians. So we were 12 of us in my home. We were brought up very well in a Christian manner, very well disciplined. And uh, we were nine sisters, three brothers. I never saw any discrimination among my siblings. I owe a lot to my parents and I owe a lot to the Christianity that was instilled Mm -hmm. in me. It really changes somebody's character to make you what you are supposed to be. I want to know the Zipporah, the young girl in that village in Baringo County. Tell us a bit about your life when you were a small girl and you know did you ever occur to you that you would be who you are today during those days? Well, I would say I was maybe kind of privileged than the others because we came back, we came from this Christian family. But the rest of the age mates that we grew up together lived a different lifestyle. Of course, uh, they were nicknaming us to be the better ones, the educated ones, Kipsukulin, the, those who went to school because we were able to go to Sunday school and we, my other elder children, brother, uh, siblings went to school, they had gone to school. I'm number five in the family. Mm-hmm. So they gave us, they looked at us as a different people. We also looked at them as different people. But there were one or two qualities that I liked. The age group. Every other year, there is an age group when you are at the age of 10 to 12. There is a lot of singing around, scenarios, mm. and people when the girls were being circumcised with their boys, you hear those songs, you want to be there. Yeah. But of course, my parents would not allow us to, to, to mix. So there was that kind of a segregation. Mm-hmm. And so we realized we were not exactly the same as, as them, the and, and they were not exactly like us. So I attempted once, and it's in my book, that I wanted to join them also to test the circumcision. Mm-hmm. I was thoroughly trashed. I was given a proper pitting, and I'll never forgotten up to now. And I, I came to realize as years go by, as when I got married, I got my children, 
that my parents were right. Because when I was in Mindeleo, I championed the advocacy of FGM, and that is how it has been made law in this country because of the harmful traditions that come with it. Let's talk about your father who hosted uh, the late Mze Daniel Turechi Charap Moy during his days as a young boy. I mean, tell us about that friendship, that early friendship with the country's second president and what you remember of him. Okay, my mother was among the first women Christians who went to the missionary school in Gabartonjo. And in Gabartonjo there were 12, and the 12 of them got married in one day. But they had the missionaries, the Musungu missionaries had to choose them the sweetest. So among these 12 girls, my mother was one of them. But my mother tried from their home called Kasisit in North Paringo mm. to the mission school in Gabartonjo. And reaching Gabartonjo, she stayed in the school. And then they brought this young man, I think at the end of the age of eight, young young man who lost his mother and this, uh, a late missionary who was very close with the missionary is called Stefano Chepkonga very famous missionary to his pastor, brought this boy from Sacho. Mm. So when this boy got to the school, he was too small to be molested by the big boys. Mm -hmm. So there was, he was taken to the girl's dorm and became very <laughs> close to my late mother. So <laughs> she was staying with the girls, doing everything like the girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, when my mother now got her sweeter, he asked the missionaries to be allowed to go with this young boy to their home, yeah. to her new home. Of course, she, the missionaries did not, since being an orphan, did not refuse. That's, what, that's the story we were told. Mm. Because when I grew up, I remember seeing Mze very vividly and very well, and Mze was climbing trees at home, <laughs> shaking through fruits, <laughs> called soge, uh -huh. soge in, in Kalenjin, uh -huh. for us to pick like what you are You see now this, <laughs> so yes, this is and the we second, would eat this it. This is and Mze and Mze right, himself. Yeah. So you used to play Dropping with. them, <laughs> so we would uh, eat it. Uh -huh. So I remember very well, so, it became but it was but I, when I grew up I didn't know it was different but we were one until until he passed on. Yeah. There's a picture that is very common of you. You were watching his body as, as it lied in state and parliament and you became very emotional in that moment. I want to know what was going on through your mind. I, I didn't accept that he's gone. I became very emotional because of the support that I got especially when I was in Mindeleo, um, whenever I had an issue with the women or whatever, the women wanted something, I go to him, he will never say no. He, had a, he was a very good listener, he, he was very passionate about women, and therefore he gave a lot of his support for women. And that is why the women of Kenya are where they are, because of him. Tell us a bit about your career before politics. I got married in 1962 to Mr. Kiton, he's sleeping there. And after my wedding, we, we were teaching in the same school together with him. He got a job with KTDA in Kericho mm -hmm. and Kangaita. So we relocated to Kericho. And when we got to Kericho, I got my second child and I got a new job with the World Assembly, with the Family Planning Association of Kenya in social work and field work. And I did that job as a field officer until 1970. He was relocated again, he was transferred, he got a promotion to head office, and we moved to Nairobi and we lived in Lavington. By the way, I got three children, mm. and my children, were the first African children to go to a primary school for Europeans in Kericho, Kericho Primary. My wow. son Kibet went to school, his Colonel Kiton went to school as a, 
uh, standard one. Mm -hmm. And I remember him coming home crying and he says he's not going back to school. I said, why? Because they have called him, why is a monkey in our mm -hmm. class? He was different. So he was the first uh, mm -hmm. African child. So he felt that he was being discriminated. By the time Zungus were going back, of course. And so after Kericho, we moved to Nairobi. So I got another job with the World Assembly of Youth, which is a UN youth body mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. The Youth Assembly of Youth was advocating for self-independence and self-supporting of young people. So I did that job from 1971 to 1976 and uh, I became the regional manager as well and it allowed it took me to traverse all over the world advocating on youth work and making resolutions for young people around the world until it was adopted by the General Assembly in September 1974 the General Assembly. How did this shape you into your entry into politics? When we say when to be a politician from our home, I got very inspired. And I followed what he was doing all through. And I stayed with them anyway, as I was growing up. When he got married, I stayed in their home. So I got inspired. And so anyway, I think even my late mother was a counselor. So I think there is also politics. And my blood. late brother also was a, a politician. So I think the politics is in the family. It's in the DNA somewhere. Yes, it's just uh, <laughs> <laughs> So 1988, you get into parliament yes. as a nominated member of parliament. M there were no many women in, in, in leadership at that particular time. Tell us about that transition and how it was like being in parliament i think when things. i went into the parliament first my my nomination we were only nine women in not like when grace onyango went in she was the first woman mm -hmm. i don't know whether you remember you know that mm -hmm. it is good for women and it is good for history to be maintained and to be kept that even women also needs a record keeping of of their track record of what they've done and that's why i've decided to write my own story so we were nine women and uh, mother karu and i interacted and we became very good friends and we served in one committee one thing you must know that we were not allowed to take a handbag into the chamber what yes a woman would not take a handbag, handbag. is like the second so we, yes, side of a woman right you leave your and and, and they suspect that we could carry things Why? so one day we asked uh -huh. What about the men? Who knows what they carry in these pockets they have? Could they not carry a pistol here or in the jacket of a, his, his, his coat? So eventually it has been overruled that we, you can go in with your handbag. Secondly, I think there was a, an interruption in parliament one afternoon when a member of parliament, I don't remember the name, saying, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to know whether Honorary Bozubora Kitony is in order to come to the house wearing trousers. Mm. You are not supposed to wear trousers as a woman. Mm. So we have broken so many no <laughs> home notes in, in, the, no, in, in, in the house. Yeah. So the speaker, it took a hot debate. Eh? I wanted to get embarrassed, but I got very courageous. <laughs> You knew you're not supposed to wear trousers. Yes, but I but deliberately, I broke many rules. <laughs> I said, that I hear your handbag to tap a delicia. So the speaker eventually ruled and said she's in order. So there was a lot of thumb. Yeah. The yeah. life goes on, and that was the life in Parliament, and I enjoyed it immensely. What, was your, what would you term as your biggest achievement during those days as a member of parliament, as a nominated member of parliament, and even when you got nominated into, into Senate? I put on the referral, ref, uh, the, the motion on er erosion, mm -hmm. and it was passed into law. So that was my achievement, mm -hmm. yes. Let's talk about women and leadership in this country. You have been in that journey trying to be, to become even a member of parliament. Tell us about how this country has treated women leadership do you think there is that deliberate effort to support women who want to be leaders such as yourself in those days 
women have a right like anybody else in in in, in fighting for any position but what i want to tell women is to remain a woman and a mother from whatever position you are in you have the quality but you got to carry yourself with a lot of integrity and decorum that it deserves you to be given back what you you are women misuse the positions because when they get into that power i think we allow a lot of heirs to grow which i say no you should remain as a woman and because the laws have been put in place after beijing that there is no more discrimination am among women mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is where i, I decorate you you're sitting there i would say honorable zipora kitoni cbs mbs ogw and also you are recognized globally and earned an award the american biographical institute yes. women of the year award in 1999 i mean this this must have been such an experience for you tell us a bit about you know being decorated to that particular level I, I believe in hard believing in yourself first and foremost and when you do something do it to the best of your ability and when you do something do it to the satisfaction of whoever of whoever you wanted to do i will not let me now tell you this i will not start anything if i don't see the end if i know i'm not reached there i rather not touch it but anything that i touch with these fingers god mm -hmm. help that gave me this i will make sure that i do it to the satisfaction of me and whoever i'm doing for it must be a success right. as long as zipora puts her head and her hand in it right. it has to succeed i have to i don't have a, a reverse gear <laughs> <laughs> i know two ways about it you are such a strong woman you know yes. so many lessons yes. you learned from yes. me and believe in yourself what? yeah and if you don't believe in yourself then then you you have, you have no business you you, you cannot do anything people want to know where is zipora what is she doing i mean now just, now i know. will take you around the farm <laughs> briefly i am never idle and i want to say i thank god for every moment i have gotten uh here because i have my hands are full we have digressed digressed in the farming here because of the challenges that people got into into maize farming so we have gone to coffee for uh, we export we we have planted coffee we have planted tea and we have macadamia and we have dairy and also we have gone to hospitality we have a number of one or two hotels and a conference facility i think when you pass by you saw a conference and going you say on. it as if it's just a by the way it's one yes. of the best hotels right we, we, ha we actually want i said <laughs> if i do something i want to do to the best of to my best, ability yeah. i don't do half half i want the best and the best the top top of the range so that's what makes me wake up early i do my prayers and i do the farm work then go to the hospitality and then go around the farm come back home for lunch so i'm never idle i don't even have time i used to be an avid golfer but now i don't even have time Thank to play and since corona came mm. we were confined they said those 60 up stay <laughs> home yeah. so staying home has given me a lot of time to look at this home critic do uplifting what here and there so i run around all over the place is spacious so um i've not been able to play my golf as i used to maybe i'm too old now but i still have my kit i've had three holes in one in golf and i used to love golf every day i leave everything even okay. my visitors at home <laughs> and, and i go and play nobody can interfere but now i'm i am grounded here <laughs> but i'm not grounded i'm enjoying every bit of my time uh, here what made you retire though personal disappointments when i see women especially in parliament i want to state it very clear that women should remain women and 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 and, and be modest in their way of dressing sometimes you see these young women who have come into politics they want to show it 
better that they are better than anybody else. No, still remain what you are supposed to be. I told one young lady one time, no, this is not correct. You know, she really told me off. You're not my mother. If my mother cannot tell me this, who are you to tell me? So I think women should remain a woman and be respectful so that you are respected, mm -hmm. but not to overdone what you are not supposed to overdo. Mm -hmm. Remain a woman of integrity, a woman who can be emulated by your children. I cannot afford to see a woman fighting with another woman. That put me off. Women undressing in the house, mm. the house of law order. No, that really removed me from politics. So you said you leave it for the next No, generation. I leave it for the next If that is what is going to happen, Not if that you. is what we fought for, Not for I washed my hands off. And you left? Yes, I got very, very okay. disappointed and demoralized seeing what my young daughters are doing in the house. So I said, we are not in competition. If if I want to remain to be remembered for what I did, that's what I did to retire. Mm. I'm a, a, gra a great grandmother of three. And you say, you're telling me you have 15 grandchildren? Tell us a 14. bit about 14 yes. grandchildren. Yes. Tell us a bit about that and how you I have a wonderful, a wonderful needed family. Uh -huh. Three sons and two, 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 two sons and two daughters, one daughter. And I have my grandchildren, they've all gone to good schools and I have the great grandchildren and they love, we love each other very much, yes. All right, mm. you have an eye for good things, you shop, you travel across the, the world shopping. I have, I've <laughs> traversed the world, yes. All right, yeah, we really yes. appreciate you creating time and just telling us a bit about your journey yes. and how it has shaped the history of this country. Thank you. Thank you are you welcome. So Karibu <laughs> Thank you. So that has been uh, the one and only Honorable Zipora Kitoni. She has just taken us into her world to understand how her journey has been and her decision to retire from politics in 2017, the reason she did it. But as we have learned from her, she's actually very actively involved in her second passion that is farming and also she is a very powerful entrepreneur right here in Transoya County. Thank you for watching Legends Edition tonight. Thanks. My name is Safina Cheng Oma, back to in studio. The amazing story of Honorable Zipora Kitoni, a former chairperson of the Maendeleo Yawanawake organization, former nominated senator and a champion for women's rights, as told to Serfine Achieng Oma. Tune in every Saturday at 9 p.m. as we hear from Kenya's living legends. And that's all from our newsroom. I am Fayaz Qureshi. Have a good night.
My name is Muhammad Ahmed Muhammad, the CEO of Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation, popularly known as KDIC. The corporation recently increased the protected sum from the previous 100,000 shillings to 500,000 shillings per account. This is the highest in Sub-Saharan Africa. In effect, the corporation now covers 99% of the depositors in the unlikely event of a closure of a bank. So KDIC encourages the depositors to continue doing business with our banks that are strong and resilient. Be sure, check out for a KDIC sticker in your banking hall. KDIC, protecting your deposits. The mission is to contribute to national development through provision of sustainable peace and tranquility to all people. Join KBC Channel 1 on Monday, the 29th of November, 2021, for the Administration Police Service Passing Out Parade at Embakasi to be graced by President Uru Kenyatta. something beyond my control. Sawa
mimi ni kwa mtu wa maana bado wewe ni wa maana wapi niko hapa ni wapi hapa ni pahali pa mtu kuja kukufia basi twende Nairobi tukaishi huko We ni msichana mzuri sana. Acha kuharibu wakati wako na mtu kama mimi. Thank mm-hmm. you.